So what is it about conservatism that is a great thing? Well, here's my facts. If you are a true conservative and you want to actually conserve the status quo instead of these fake aristocrats, theocrats, plutocrats that we currently have, you should be, the first thing you should want to do is go back to a time that was very simple. Alexander Hamilton created the 11 point plan for American manufacturers or he had a full view of inducements that worked from the time of the American Revolution until the time of the Civil War. I'll get into the Civil War, why it worked until then in a minute, but there were at least 11 points that all manufacturers truly had to work on that created the prosperity that um, the Americans had in the time of 1776 until 1850. Number one, protecting your duties or duties on these foreign art on those foreign articles which are rivals of the domestic ones intended to be encouraged in other words you create a tariff on foreign imports so that way you essentially have um, money that's going in into the government to essentially help the government outside of um, a free trade agreement. Number two, prohibit prohibitions of rival articles or duties equivalent to prohibitions. In other words, let's take away the drug war, let's take away the, um, the war on weed, and let's essentially let it go and let it be encouraged to create new businesses and new products. Number three, Prohibitions of the exportation of the materials or ma of manufacturers. So if Ford, GE, and any other company wants to send work work to another country, far be it from me. But if they want to go and get the two, cent, two cents an hour, then what they have to do is they have to increase the labor to the same of what they would get here in the United States. So that way it's just not really all that conducive. Essentially, if you have NAFTA working, you really need to destroy um, NAFTA so that way you can prohibit the exportation of those materials. Now, four, pecuniary bounties. Now, what um, Alexander what Alexander Hamilton actually means by pecuniary bounties is that if you find something new, you essentially um, want to tax it so that way lay a duty on foreign manufacturers of the material the growth of which is desired to be encouraged and to apply the produce of that duty by way of bounty either upon the production of the material itself or upon its manufacture at home or upon both in other words tax bo in both areas in both countries if you're going to be in america and you're producing weed if it's cheaper over in denmark um you actually want to tax it and make them equal so that way it benefits the United States or Denmark equally. That's what a pecuniary duty is. Number four, five, premiums. Charge for a superior service and quality. Um, if you have a better skill set, you're going to charge more. Again, that helps to differentiate labor in some way, shape, or form. Number six, the exemption of raw materials of manufacturers from duty. So, in other words, don't lay taxes on raw materials, books, clothes, household furniture. So, probably you don't want to tax paper, but you'll tax books. You don't want to tax clothes, but you'll tax te textiles. Um, you'll tax the furniture, but you won't tax cloth. Um... There's plenty of other examples, but the raw materials you don't want to tax while you're taxing the finished products. Um, six, seven, drawbacks of the duties which are imposed on the materials of manufacturers. Now, there's certainly a drawback such as salt and molasses. Now, some of the drawbacks of the duties you may not salt, um, tax salt and molasses, but you might not. And I actually agree with this here. What is essentially is saying is you don't have a tariff on raw materials and of course you may not tax sugar but nowadays we have fructose corn syrup which is even worse. So I would take away the tariff on sugar and let people begin to use that instead of um, instead of high fructose corn syrup in most sodas and drinks. Um, eight, the encouragement of new intentions and discoveries at home and of the introduction into the United States of such as may have been made in other countries, particularly those which relate to machinery. Right now, the biggest example 
of this would have to be with um, solar energy. Encourage that instead of encouraging oil oral tariffs. This is something that seems to be common sense, but people are forgetting about that. Number nine or eight, no nine. Judicious regulations for the inspection of manufactured commodities. I really don't have to say that. I mean, if we had the SEC doing its job, then the SEC would have um, regulated commodities of oil or the futures market instead of deregulation and promoting deregulation wherever it went or having Wall Street be on K Street or Main Street. Number 10, the facilitating of pecuniary reminiscence from place to place. In other words, keeping details of commodities around the same price make it easy for people to purchase raw materials and provisions and a payment for manufactured supplies keep it keep bank paper circulated so that way it can continue to um, be useful for the people that need it the most number 11 the facilitating of the transportation of commodities number 11 is kind of big in essentially saying that you want to have train systems airplanes or um, something that the government can use to transport things a lot easier. Um, Eisenhower of course made the interstate system that we currently have and we have to keep that maintained. As long as we keep that maintained we will have 11 points for all Americans to, co to continuously have um, good trade and good commerce that work for over a over a century before finally being taken taken away in the 1850s because of various other um, issues. Of course, I'll get into those issues more at a later date. But of course, tell me what you think. Do you think Alexander Hamilton, as a radical conservative in his time, had these points, this 11-point plan? Was it useful? Was it not useful? I mean, did he was he smoking something? Is this something that we should go back to? What do you all think? And of course, I'll see you all in the next.